Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode here at Electrical Code Academy. My name is Paul Abernathy. Welcome to the video. We're going to look at some exam prep questions tonight. If you struggle with these, by all means, do me a favor. Go on over to that website you see right there, electricalcodeacademy.com.net or .org. Get in our Fast Tracks program. We will teach you the National Electrical Code. It's a difficult document to understand. There's a lot of interpretations. We spend a lot of time in our Fast Tracks program and in our Wednesday night sessions, which are something that you can come to if you're a Fast Track student, where you can ask any questions you want. We will look at anything you're struggling with in the course, and it is challenging. Ask any of our Fast Track students. This is like no other program out there anywhere. You get access to the educator, it's me, and you have so many resources to help you learn the National Electrical Code, and that's what it's all about, getting a better understanding. It's not like buying a bunch of exam questions and that's all you look up, or going to some course which they have no vested interest in you really passing. I do. I am invested in you, and that's the beauty of our program. So if you're interested in a good exam prep program or you just want to learn the National Electrical Code to a better level, that way your job is easier, you're a much bigger leader on the job, you, you're able to take charge, then go check out our website. Again, the buzz is the buzz. It is the best way to learn the National Electrical Code, hands down. I promise you. Now, you came for some exam prep questions, and we're going to do it. So get that code book out. I've got mine out. There you go. Got the 2020 edition of the National Electrical Code. That's what we're working on. We haven't shifted to the 2023 just yet, but we will soon. So let's go on and jump into these questions and uh, let's test your skills. Remember, at any time, you can pause this video. Pause it. Work the question out yourself. Go look it up in the code. Use the index, table of contents, whatever you need. And then you can come back and play it and see if you got it right. We're here to learn. But along that journey, I'm going to try to dissect it, and I'm going to give you a little bit of extra commentary. So if you don't like to listen to Paul talk, blah, 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 go watch somebody else's video. But if you're here to learn, let's do it. All right. Very first question on our slate says, the service entrance conductors, so we're talking about service entrance conductors, for a single family dwelling with a 120, 240 volts, so that tells me it's single phase, 200 ampere overcurrent protected device, so it's single single family dwelling, three wire, 120, 240 volt, and it's a 200 amp overcurrent protected device. So it's 200 amp service rating, okay? Uh, so as the main disconnect shall require, at a minimum, blank AWG copper conductors. Okay, so if you're an old hat at this and you look at this and you go, oh, this is a no brainer, I'm gonna go to 310, 16, I'm going to look for a conductor that can handle 200 amps, and that's my choice. And you wouldn't be wrong in the real world. Um, so let's do that real quick, as if we're in the real world, and see if that's what we would do. I'm going to tell you right now, that is not what we do. So if you already know what you're going to do, you can always pause this video, go get your answer, and then come back. But as always, I can't help it. The educator in me wants to take you through the logic train. So we're going to do that. So first, I just want you to go to 31016. So I'm going to get us over there real quick. So bear with me while I get me over to where I need to be in 310.16. And I will get us there right now. Okay, so we're over here at 31016. As you can see right here, so we're dealing with the ampacities, and note we're going to look at the table. And this is the table. Um, obviously, where conductors are zero to two thousand volts, yes. Or obviously, conductors are rated sixty, seventy-five, or ninety. Well, this is a two hundred amp. So if we think about one ten point fourteen C, that since we're over hundred amps, we're going to be seventy-five. So we know that. Even though somebody might say, "Well, you didn't tell me the insulation type." For this question, it doesn't matter. Don't overthink it now. That's where people go into problems. We know the amps. So let's focus on that. Okay. Um, and here we've got wire is installed in 30 degrees C. Nothing in that question said what the ambient was, whether it was over 30 or under 30. So we're going to assume a perfect world because nobody said anything otherwise. And the question mentioned nothing about being more than three current current conductors. Okay. 
So, so far, so good. We're just at 3, 10, 16. Okay. This is where your logic train's trying to go. I, I get it. I know you've already busted out saying, no, Paul, you go to another place. Relax. I just want to show you. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go on down to the table. And here's the ampacity table. Now I'll go on and see if I can't pop this out a little bit. And I'm not sure what this looks like on my screen, but this is it right here. And it doesn't show very well. So let me see if I can't get rid of it. That's the one bad thing about link. Uh, so we'll just kind of go down through here. So we're in the 75 degree column right here. So we'll go down. And so remember we said that 200 amps right there, right? So that's the 200 amps. Go to the left, that would be a three aught, right? Copper, the question had copper. So in the real world, if you wanna go with the three aught, then that's fine. Perfectly acceptable, it can handle 200 amps, you're good to go. Now, because we're dealing with the question, it told us that it was single phase, 12240, single family dwelling. It was 200 amp years, so it's not over 400 and not under 100. It should start making you think about a rule that you should be familiar with called the 83% rule. Now, for years, we would have to calculate that out. There was a little table there, and then it disappeared, and then it went into informative Annex D under one of the examples, and then in 2020, it made it back into the National Electrical Code. Now, if you're in the 2017 edition, you're thinking, well, where is this area? That was 31015B7. Well, in the 2020 code, it changed. It went to 310.12. And that's where that little nifty table went. Now, a couple things I'll remind you about this table before we go look at it. This table only applies if there are no adjustment or corrections. Means if you don't have more than three current carrying conductors and your ambient temperature is not other than 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect world. If it is, then you're going to have to do some type of adjustment or correction if it isn't that perfect world, okay? But that is not what our question is. Our question, and that's for another learning episode, and I have plenty of episodes on that. If you wanna join our monthly subscription or our annual subscription over on that website right there, then you can watch my D-Rating Demystified and I'll explain all those nuances about adjustment and corrections and conductors. That's called D-Rating Demystified, so go check that out. Now, we're gonna to try to answer the question. So it said, in the code, we know that we can do this 83% rule thing but we have to see whether everything in our question applies. So let's go to 310.12. Okay, so if I can get this thing to go there, I guess I'm gonna have to do it manually because sometimes Link has a little bit of a brain fart or something. All right, so here's 310.12, single phase dwelling services and feeders. Well, our question, was a single phase, 12240, okay? So it looks like it says right here, it says for one family dwellings, that's what we've got, um, and individual dwelling units of two family and multifamily dwellings, you can also apply 310.12 for those, um, where it's single phase, 12240 volt system, it shall be permitted to size, again, we're talking about the service or feeder conductors, to size in accordance with 310.12A through D. Now, A is dealing, ours is obviously a service, so we'll be dealing with A. Now, in this lesson, I am not gonna go into one family dwellings if we're dealing with the 208Y 120. I have plenty of videos on that. We wanna keep it on topic, and we wanna be able to answer the question as it's presented. So we know it's a service. We know that it's single phase. We know that it's 12240. Okay, what's next? All right, well, since we know it's a service, then we wanna go down and, and, and identify that we're dealing with this right here. So let's see what it says here. It says for a service rated 100 amperes through 400 amperes, well, we feel good about this one, right? Because it said 200 amps. So we're right smack in the middle. We're good to go there, okay? So far, so good. It says the service conductors supplying the entire load associated with this one family dwelling, and ours is, so our service conductors, whether they're coming from the weatherhead or from underground lateral up, 
into the meter, into the service equipment, everything, it's seeing 100% of the loads for this dwelling, okay? Again, if you don't understand what happens when it doesn't, then you need to go subscribe to our monthly or annual subscription and at least watch our 12-hour series on grounding and bonding. That'll pay for your monthly subscription or your annual. If you want to really say thank you, do the annual. Uh, but also we have a eight-part swimming pool, spas, everything 680 in there, worth the price of admission alone uh, with Vince Delacroix, who did it with me. Great series. Plus there's tons and tons and tons of other videos in there well worth the subscription. That's up to you. All right. But we do explain this type of thing when you don't, when it's not serving all of the entire loads. Again, we explain it. That's called derating demystified. It's available in our subscription program. Okay. So here it is covering all the loads. That means the panel in our example is a 200 amp panel. Every breaker's in there. So those conductors that are supplying it are seeing 100% of the load that that house has to offer. All right, now, assuming that it applies that entire load, um, also if it's supplying the entire load associated with individual dwelling units uh, in a two-family or multi-family dwelling, okay, we're not talking about that here. It says, shall be permitted to have an ampacity, okay, remember we're talking about these service conductors, an ampacity not less than 83% of the service rating. So what is the service rating? It's 200 amps. What's 83% of that? Well, 200 times 0.83 is 166 amps. So I have to have a conductor. And remember, if there's no adjustment or corrections involved, then I can go right to this little table. We're not, we're not going to do that yet. We're not going to cheat so far. So the 83% of that 200 is two if, is of that 200 amps 80, 166 is the 83%. And it can't be less than that. It has to at least be that. Okay? So if you've got your code books, go to 31016 and look under the 75 degree column and see what size conductor would I have to have to at least be 83%. Well, 166 is 83% of the 200. I go down here, it looks like I need a 2 aught because it's at 175. I couldn't use 1 aught because that's 150. Now, you might be saying, Paul, just show it on the screen. Nope. Sorry. You're going to come to my class. You're going to use your code book. Otherwise, you're just going to have to be lost. We use the code book. Okay? I don't, I'm not going to take you everywhere. All right. So we go down, and you can see that it is 1 aught. Okay? All right. So. That's what we've got. And if you don't believe me again, like I said, I'm not going to take you there, but you know what? I lied. I'll, I'll go on and show you. Okay. Oh, don't look at the table yet. I'll take you there. I'll take you because you don't believe me. Let's go down there real quick. All right. God, this takes forever. Let me get down there. Okay. Here you go. All right. So here we go. We're in the 75 degree column right here. Obviously, we need one that's at least 166. Well, this one's not going to work. Why not? So 175, two odd. Okay, get it? Okay. I do not know why Link has so many problems lately. I don't know, if you're looking in FPA, Link sometimes acts wonky. I love it, don't get me wrong, I love it, but it sometimes acts wonky. Okay, so here we are, we're back to services. Okay. All right, so we know that we're within 100 and 400. We're good there. We know that we can be a 2 watt is 83%. Now, remember what I said, if you did have adjustment and corrections, then you would do it like you normally would do. I could use the 90 degree for adjustment and corrections, depending on the insulation rating, whatever conductors you're using. In this case, nothing was given, so it's kind of hard for us to do that. Always answer the question based on what is given to you. So all we can do is take that 200 and do it at 83% in size of conductor. Now, since no adjustment or corrections are given, I go right to the table. And I wanted to show you the long way rather than just say, let's just go to the table. But if you do go to the table, you're going to notice that the 200 amp rated device is two odd copper. Now, why did I show you all that? To show you that the 83% rule that we see in 310.12 is the same whether or not you use this table 
or you use 310.16 and you apply the 83% to whatever the rating is of the service or feeders disconnection means, okay? So if it's a 200 amp service, 200, 83% of that is 166 and kind of do it that way, all right? Okay, so I just wanted to work you all through that so you kind of get an understanding. So that's what this table is based on, 83%. It just already does the math. Now see that little note at the bottom? It reminds you one more time that if no adjustment or correction factors are required, this table shall be permitted to be applied. But if you do have an adjustment or correction that is in place, this is not going to work. You're going to have to now do a calculation, and then after the, the adjustment or correction, then you're going to make sure that you're still not less than what? 83%. So you might have to go to a bigger conductor, and after you apply the different demands, whether it's adjustment or correction factors, you still can't have a conductor that's what? Less than 83%. Make sense? All right. If you want to learn more about that, then you need to get our subscription and watch our D-Rating Demystified video. Okay? All right. Trust me. That's going to be the toughest one tonight. Promise. All right. Might not be true, but anyway. All right. So let's answer this question real quick. And let's see here. So we said it's two. And there you go. Table 310.12. All right? Uh, but what I wanted to do is tell you how to dissect a question. So if you've never worked with me before, uh, on an exam, you got a couple minutes to answer a question. But when you're studying for an exam, you want to take whatever time you need. Don't listen to what anybody else tells you. They're full of crap. I've been doing this for 30-some years. If anybody tells you all you get is code questions and keep trying to answer them in two minutes or less, they are misleading you. They're not teaching you. They only want your money. You need to learn to take your time during a study period to dissect questions. Now, when you do that, when it becomes exam time, you are going to be able to answer them quickly because you've learned how to dissect things and you've been more proficient at it. Look, there's a method to this madness. So if you're thinking, well, Paul, we could have, you should have answered that in two minutes. That is not what my classes are about. And if that's what you want, there's plenty of books on Amazon. There's plenty of DVDs out there you can get. Best of luck to you. It's not what I teach. I teach things that you can remember. That's why I teach it. Okay, next question. All right. Next it says the maximum voltage for a class one remote control and signal circuit is blank voltage. Okay. So obviously we're asking about remote controlling signaling circuits. And it's class one. Now a savvy fast tracks uh, student will think, okay, there is a specific article that deals with remote control and signaling. So I could go to the table of contents and look through the different units. And of course, looking at this, I can tell by looking at this that we're talking about some type of special condition. So I'm in chapter seven. So I'm gonna look down and I see that there's a 725 that says class one, class two, and class three remote control signaling. So that tells me that I'm going to be in 725. Now, also in the table of contents, and a lot of people don't use the table of contents, but if you see something that through your studies, you see something that is uh, indicative of a wiring method type or something specific like class one, class two, or class three remote control, then you can go to the table of contents and kind of scan all the bolds. That's going to be your articles and see if you see one. And here I see class one, class two, class three. Now under this, we're focused on class one. So if I look at it, I can see that part two of 725 deals with class one circuits. But we wanna get a little bit better. We wanna be proficient. Now in an exam, if you go right there to part two, you probably can use what we call the bold scanning technique and it's not gonna take you long. It's a very short part within 725. But we want to do something else. We want to go to the index real quick and see if we see anything under remote control first. Then we'll look under class and see if there's anything under class. Now, why do we do this when you're studying? The more that you can get familiar with the index and what is and what isn't in there and get more comfortable with flipping through it, it's really going to help you not just on an exam, 
but it's really going to help you in the real world too when time is of the essence for you to find an answer on a project. There's always somebody breathing down your neck and you're trying to find an answer. So we're going to go look. So I'm looking under remote control and then I'm looking under down here and I say, okay, no, remote control, Nelly. Okay, remote. And I'm looking under remote. Oh, I see class one circuits and I see 725. I see part two again. So that tells me, you know, I'm feeling pretty confident about this part two real quick. So also you go down, you'll see class one and you see everything that's indented under class one indented. That means it goes with class one. So I'm looking down here and I've got class one circuits class. Uh, and then I'm going under and I see conductors 725.49 and I'm going down a number size and use. Okay. So the size, okay. And this is a use, this is voltage. Um, but it says 725.49 a, and I'm looking there going, okay, well, what I did notice is that it's very short. So part two is pretty much a culmination of, uh, a couple sections. It's not big. So immediately at that point, I'm going to stop looking down here. I'm going to go right to part two. I've confirmed it. And then I'm going to do bold scanning. And what am I looking for? The answers in the question are voltage ratings, and that's what we're looking for. Plus the trigger in this question is class one remote control and signaling circuits. Why do I say that? Well, class one can have power limited type of circuits, but also remote control and signaling all wrapped in one. So you can have some power aspects, power conductors that are class one, but then you have remote control and signaling. And so we learn that in the Fast Tracks program. We, we go over these things uh, in their lessons, but you'll get to where you understand how that works. So I'm going to go to part two, 725. I'm going to take you with me. Let's go on and do this together uh, real quick, and I will go on and take you into the, into the link. And we'll go to 725. And let me just get it situated here. There's seven. And here's 725. Now, see, it says class one, class two, class three, remote control signaling. Okay. And there's those power limited I was talking about. So we're going to go here and I'm going to jump right down to uh, what we're talking about here is part two. So we're talking about class one circuits. That's what we're dealing with. Okay. So now I know that I'm armed with what? A voltage value. Well, the first one I hit when I'm bold scanning is, but this is power limited. 30 volts. Now that is one of the answers probably, but that's not for us because that's power limited circuits. We're going to keep going down and we're going under what? Okay. Scroll down. We say, okay, well, there's power, there's power limited. And here is class one remote control and signaling. Wasn't that what our question was all about? Remote control and signaling class one. Notice that I see a voltage in here. It says these circuits shall not exceed 600 volts. Okay. All right. So class one remote control and signaling 600 volts, just that simple. And it didn't take us very long once you kind of understand the flow. So let's kind of go back here to our question. So here we know it's 600 volts. Now, you know, they're going to put 30 volts out there. You know, they're going to do it. Uh, but we've learned that is not what it is. So we're going to go down here to 600 and there's our code reference 625.41B. And that's exactly what we got. And you saw ways that we got there, whether the table of contents or the index, we dissected it. Class one. There's another little thing that we do in the fast tracks program that I encourage, and that is creating flashcards. So I'm you sure you probably heard me talk about flashcards before. Uh, whereas you take some index cards and on one side, you'll write the code article and the other side, you'll write what it is. Um, we do that electronically these days and you can make unlimited flashcards. And I encourage students to go in there and make flashcards for every article in the code. That way you can see it. Boom. You look at it. 330 MC cable, 320 AC cable, right? Just like that. 310 conductors, uh, 300 general, uh, general requirements. Um, you're looking at 110. Okay working spaces, clearing spaces. You're looking at definitions 100. You're looking at 430 for motors, 440 HVAC, um, all those type of things. 338 service entrance uh, cables, conductors, and things like that. SE, USE, all that type of stuff. 
um, 340 UF. You start just kind of digging into it. 525 circuses and, and 680 swimming pools, spas, hot tubs, uh, 682 natural and artificial made bodies of water. And all these type of things will start coming to you. You'll learn the different tables, grounding and bonding, 250. You'll learn that the sizing equipment grounding conductor is 250.122. Uh, you'll learn that sizing supply side bonding jumper is 250.102C1. Uh, there's just so much that you'll learn as you go through our program. And these things you're going to carry out into the field. It's just going to make you much better. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's go on. And uh, go to the next question. All right. The next question. It says the lighting load. Let me make sure I'm on that real quick, folks. There we go. Okay. The lighting load for a 12,000 square foot apartment building, not using the energy code adopted by the local AHJ. We don't care about the energy code at this point. Is blank VA. Now, this is an interesting question because this is one where the student's mind can start to wander. Notice the question didn't ask me to calculate any to be used for the service. It didn't say anything about demand factors. It didn't say anything. It just says, hey, what's the lighting load? That's it. Now, immediately, some folks will jump to 220.12, and that is your VA per square foot lighting load. Well, this is an apartment complex, so it's associated with dwellings. So it's not going to use... 220.12. Now, if you're in the 2017 code, then you're going to be there because of dwelling units. If you're in the 2020 code, then you're not going to be there. You're going to be in 220.14. And let's go look at that because we want to see what it is. Now, remember, don't get lost in the question. Don't think that you're going to take this value and then jump to 220.42 and start applying some demand factors to it. It didn't ask you to do any of that. It just wanted to know what is the lighting load. So it's kind of a way I could have said this. I could have said, hey, what is the connected lighting load? And you would have known I don't need to go do any calculation beyond this. It's just right here. OK. All right. So let's go to the, the uh, link real quick. And I will take you, again, it's so easy to overanalyze a question. I get it. So if we go to 220 calculations, and let's go to 220.12 real quick just to show you. So this is, we're not using the energy code, okay? It said not to. This is 220.12. You notice that it doesn't have anything in here about dwellings anymore. Uh, it, it does in the 2017, but it doesn't in the 2020. Okay, so we're not even going to be using this. Okay, where are we going to go? Well, it's a dwelling unit. So we're going to go down to it's a collection of dwelling units, I should say. So we're going to go down and we're going to use J. J says that in one family, two family and multifamily dwellings. Well, it's an apartment complex. It's a multifamily dwelling. It says the minimum unit load shall be not less than then three VA per square foot, okay? Now, we, haven't, we aren't going to apply any demands to this. That's not what the question asks. And again, that's a problem sometimes when people get locked into something and they want to start going beyond what's given to you in the question. Don't do that. Stay with the question. And so in this case, it's 12,000 square feet. And we saw that 220.14J said it's three VA per square foot. So it's 12,000 times three, 36,000. Now, in the scheme of life, in the full service calculation, we probably are gonna apply some demand factors to here, but that's not what it's asking here. So don't start going down that road, okay? So answering this question, the answer is, now, the reason I'll tell you this why I make this up real quick. Let, let, me, let me explain this real quick. The person that would do this and think you applied demand factors would do that, and they would go to 220.42, right? They would go to 220.42, and they would say, okay, wait, the first 3,000 of that 36,000 is at 100%, and the remainder is at 35%, right? Weren't you thinking that? So we would be 36,000 minus 3,000, that's 33,000 times 35%. That'd be 11,550 plus the 3,000. 
you would think that the answer is 14,550, wouldn't you? And the answer is there, right? Wrong. Because it did not say we're doing a service calculation. We're not applying any demands. It just wanted the lighting load. That's it. Don't overthink it. I know you know how to do it, but don't overthink it. So let's look at the question here. Let's go back and answer this one here. So I know you, you, some of you are saying, no, Paul, click this one. This, this one. But nothing said anything about demands here. So I am going to click this. Exactly right. 220.14J. If I had to click this, it would have been wrong. Okay. Now, when you're doing a low calculation, it might be applicable. But not when they only want to know the lighting load. That's all they ask you. Okay. And again, would it have been simpler if I had said the, uh, the calculated lighting load? Did that, would that have made it better? Okay. It's how you read the question. Don't try to jump for things they're not asking for. Okay. And if they do that, that's a poor exam question. Shame on them. Because really, you're trying to answer what they give you. Okay. All right. Let's go on. All right. The next question we have here is talking about, looks like a cable bus. So it says a blank AWG conductor is the minimum size conductor permitted in a cable bus. Okay. Well, what you dissecting this out, folks? This is simple, right? You know that we're talking about a cable bus. Well, this is a great opportunity. And Jay, the basement king, Grunberg, likes to always say this in our training when we go to Wednesday nights. He always says, when you get an opportunity, use the table of contents. Well, we're going to do that. Unless you know where cable bus is in the code and you know the article, which you should if you did flashcards, well, we're going to go to the index. And I'm not going to go there. I'm going to let you go there in your code book. And let's go to the index. Now, we know this is a wiring method. So it's going to be under chapter three. And we look at it and we're going to keep going down and look at all the bolds. And that is the articles. And then we're going to go across and look and see. And we go down all these and we're going to notice that. Ah, cable bus. Article 370. Did you know that? 370. All right. Now, I'm also going to notice something really quickly. This is a neat tip. Look at it. Before I'm going to go back in the index and all this kind of crap, all that, I'm looking at it going, wait a minute. 370 starts on page 226 and it ends on 227. It's only one page. It can't be a lot. Bold scan, stop, go to 370. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So let's do that. Let's go to 370. And I'm going to go in my code book here. Oops. There we go. Let me make sure that I'm still in it. Okay. Got so many screens open, folks. You just got to bear with me. All right, so I'm going to go to 370. There we go. There's our cable bus right there. Click it. Now. It is going to bold scan it. Now, this is all commentary, so I'll get rid of it. So we're going to look at it. We're bold scanning really quickly. Okay. Now, what do we know about the bold scan? We're going to use the answers that are in our bold scan. And what was in our bold scan? Let's go back. I mean, what are we looking for? Let's kind of go back real quick. What are we looking for? We're looking for conductor sizes. A 1, a 1 aught, a 2, and a 2 aught. So obviously the answer is here. So we're bold scanning to find sizing, minimum sizing, that's important language, of the conductors, and we have some sizes to use for bolt scanning, okay? All right, so I just wanted to set the tone there. All right, so we're back at it here, and let's do some bolt scanning. Use is not permitted, installation, okay? Here, side through penetrations, conductors. There we go, that's what we're asking about, right? Size, boom. Looks like 370.20, all right? Oh, look at here, 370.20 conductors, the current current conductors in a bus shall, all right? So they have to have an installation rating of at least 75 degrees C or higher, okay, makes sense. And here, be sized in accordance with the design of the cable bus, but no case be smaller than one aught. One aught. So cable bus, this actually gets designed and then gets put together on site. But the design, in any case, it cannot be smaller than one aught in a cable bus. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the code. Go back to our question. 
So this was easy. So you answered that one super quick and we used the table of uh, the index. No, table of contents to do this, to tell us to get there. Now, if you're already ahead of the game and you already know that it was 370, dude, you're rocking and rolling. You already know that. And there you go. So there you go, one ot. And there we go, 370.20 A2. All right, hang in there, folks. Stick with me. We got one more. All right, this is a doozy. So I can already tell because it's a water heater question. And let's look, kind of look at this. All right, so here's the question. You know, hang with me. It says the maximum size overcurrent protective device used to protect a water heater that is a 240 volt and rated at 4,500 watts, that's a typical water heater, by the way, uh, is blank amperes. Okay, let's stop and think about this for a second. How many of you out there immediately think, well, I know that it's an appliance. It's in 422. That's what appliances are. You get it. Some of you may even know the section that deals with storage tank type water heaters, right? Now, that didn't say that's what this is, but you would immediately thought to go there, wouldn't you? All right. So what we're going to do real quick, let's go to the index. Okay. So I'm going to go to the index and I'm going to look under water heater. Why not? Okay. Now, why do I do this? What I tell you earlier, it's not to drag out my video. Trust me. It's, that has nothing to do with that. Okay, got to give you the womp womp on that one. No, it's so that we can actually, why? Because I know people don't watch my 30 minute videos. If you're, if you're watching by this stage, you're a rarity. Okay. It means you really get it. You really want to be successful. For those that dropped off after five, 10 minutes, you're never going to get it. Okay. You don't really want to learn. You just, you know, you don't have no dedication. I'm just saying. All right. So let's go here. Or if I'm boring, that's, I get it too. So water heaters, you see 422.11F3. And then you see it says 422.13. Both of those are important. And since they both are being referenced here, and then you notice the protection, it says 422.11F3, the same as the first one. Those, you're going to jot them down on that paper during your test, and that's where you're going to go. So we're going to go first, because I want to prove a point here. We're going to go to 422.13, which is where probably 95% of the people would go. All right? Okay. So 422.13, get your code books. Oh, and I'll, you know what? I'll do it online here. Let me just do it on link. I know. I said I didn't want to keep it lazy. But we'll just we'll do it. I'll help you out today. Feeling generous. So here we go. So we're going to go to 422.13 right here. So here's the first one. OK, storage type water heater. Now, we don't know that's the one that was in the question. But again, this is where probably 99 percent of you are going to go first off. Now, this says the brand circuit overcurrent device and conductors for fixed storage type water heaters that have a capacity of 120 gallons or less, and we weren't really given any gallons, by the way, um, or less, shall be sized not smaller than 125% of the rating of the water heater. Okay, well, we're not given a nameplate, but we are given values. 4,500 watts and 240 volts, okay? That is what we're given, all right? So we're going to do a little bit of what? A little calculation here and determine what we're dealing with. So we know the watts, so 4,500, and we're going to divide that by 240. That is 18.75, okay? So remember Ohm's law, Watt's law, the watts divided into the volts going to give us the amps, so that's 18.75. So that's our amps flat out with the, uh, the um, 4,500 watts and dealing with the 240, okay? Now, it says that it cannot be less than 125% of the rating of the water heater. Well, the rating is 18.75. So we're going to go 18.75 times 1.25. And that is 23.43. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, that doesn't correspond to the overcurrent device. So I'm allowed to go up to the next largest size. Where do we get that rule? 240.4B, right? Okay, so we've gone up to the next largest size. Let me make sure I'm right on that. I don't want to mislead you. Let me make sure it's 244. Sometimes I have brain farts and you know, hey, I'm only human. I'm quoting code all the time. So I'm like you. I want to go check and just make sure I'm right. Absolutely right. 240.4B. Okay. I knew it was right. Just checking. 
All right, so, so in this case, you would think 240.6 is the breakers, and since one doesn't correspond to 23, I'm gonna go to 25. And that is one of your answers. And on your exam, that will be one of your answers. But notice something about the question. Let's go back to the question real quick. It said the maximum size. What we just did, even though we're taking a leap of faith that, it, that this is a 120 gallon or less water heater, not gonna make a difference in this question. Watch, I'll show you. But even at that case, 25 is one of the answers here, but that is a minimum size. Remember, it can't be smaller than 125%, which would have been what? 23.43, and again, it doesn't correspond, so it would have been to a 25 amp device, which is more than the 23, so it's obviously not less than, okay? And that's what 422.13 is all about. But for us, we have something that many people overlook. There's a minimum and a maximum rule when it comes to things like a water heater, but it's not just water heaters, okay? It is equipment that we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna show you. We're gonna to go to the other reference that we had, and that was 422.11F3, I believe, okay? So let's go on and do that. So I'm gonna take us back to the code. I'm gonna show you something here. You might already know it, but I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna go back up here. Now, this is titled Overcurrent Protection, and that's what we're being asked about. Okay, all right, so we're gonna go down here. So I think it was E3, I can't remember, was it E? I don't know which one I said it was. Uh, okay, so this was the other one that it gave, but this is for resistance type. So we wanted to write them both down. Well, this one's not gonna help us, okay? So F3 is not what we're worried about here. This is a uh, resistance type heating elements rated more than 48. That's not what we're looking for. But E, single non-motor operated appliance. So if you wanna remember something, remember if they give you a question that says storage type, 120 gallons or less, and they wanted to, then, then they want the minimum size, then you go to 4, uh, 422.13. But if the question is like what we had, and it wants the maximum, then check this out. This is 422.11, it is E, it is a water heater in this case. Now this doesn't just apply to water heaters, by the way. Uh, it, it, it Notice that this is titled appliances with service heating elements, and that's what the element is in the water heater. So it does apply here. But what we're dealing with is a single, non-motor operated appliance. It's a water heater. There's no motor. So we can apply here. Now, it says if the brand circuit supplies a single non-motor operated appliance, the rating of the overcurrent protection shall comply with the following. All right, number one, not exceeding the marking on the appliance where our appliance had no markings. Okay, number two, not exceeding 20 amperes if the overcurrent protect, protection rating is not marked and the appliance is rated 13.3 amperes or less. Well, ours was 18.75, so two doesn't apply. Check out number three. Not exceeding 150% of the appliance rated current if the overcurrent protection rating is not marked, and ours was not, and the appliance is rated over 13.3. Ours was, it was 18.75. Now it says where the 150% of the appliance rating does not correspond to the standard overcurrent device rating, the next size standard shall be permitted. So this is its own little next size up rule, okay? So 150%, if it doesn't correspond, I can go to the next available size. Okay, go back to the here what we're doing. Let's look at our question again. All right, so we already did the math. Let's do it again. We know that the minimum size based on 422.13, assuming that it was a 120 gallon, whatever, it's not gonna play here uh, because this is a maximum, but I want you to know, then that was 4,500 divided by 240, that's 18.75 times 1.25, and that's 23.43, so that is the minimum size. 
okay? Which means that it doesn't correspond. So then I'm using 240.4B, I can go up to a 25 because there is no breaker in 240.6A. There is no 23 amp breaker. So I can go up to 25, okay. But that's a minimum for that type of water heater. This question here is more open-ended. It doesn't say what size it is in gallons and all that type of stuff. But since it said maximum, we're gonna be using 422.11E3. And so we're gonna take that 18.75, Remember that two, uh, that 4,500 divided by 240? We're gonna multiply that by 1.50, and that gives us 28.12, 28 amps. I can promise you, if you go to 240.6 in that little table of overcurrent devices, you're not gonna find a breaker rated for 28 amps. So if it doesn't correspond, what did it say? It said you can go to the next available size. Well, 30 is your next available size. So that's why you typically see on a 4,500 watt water heater, that's why we run a 30 uh, amp rated wire to it. There you go, makes sense, right? So I, I thought it was neat to kind of walk you through that. Um, so it, again, there's some people out there that say, oh, Paul, you dug it around, dug it around. You know what, don't watch my stuff. If it annoys you how I teach, don't watch it. But those that do appreciate it, Give me a thumbs up. All right, so here's the 30. There you go, 422.11E3, absolutely correct. All right, so let's take it back to me real quick. Um, again, kind of a long one, 45 minutes or so. Um, hopefully you paused and worked these out. If you struggled with any of these or any of this sounded complicated to you, remember, I don't practice these. Um, I just open these questions up and we just we just go with it. And, and I like to be spontaneous like that. So if you disagree with anything I said, okay, don't watch my videos. If you appreciate it, I'm glad you're here. I'm not about the clicks, so I don't care. I know I've got my haters. Give me my thumbs down. That's fine. But if you like it, thumbs up, share it with other people. And again, thanks for joining our program. If you really want to learn the National Electrical Code to a higher level, and really dig into the weeds of this stuff and join us on Wednesday nights, then do me a favor. Check out the Fast Tracks program over on our website. Right there underneath the logo, you'll see the website, electricalcodeacademy.com.net or .org. Whichever one you want will help you out. And again, I'm always here to help you. Till next time, folks, stay safe. God bless.